Welcome to another episode of Lifestyle After Five. It is another Wednesday. We're glad to be here. For those that are joining us on WDJY 99.1, we say welcome. For those that be wa- that will be watching this on YouTube or Spotify, don't forget to like and subscribe. Today, we have Richard Ronkowski. Rich Normus B is his rap name, as, I've, as we refer to him on today. Today, we're going to talk about a sensitive subject. As you know, last week, we just, last Wednesday, we just had 9-11. And so Rich is going to tell us he actually was there in New York. So he's the first person that I've ever talked to that that has firsthand knowledge of what he's seen. Now, I was in D.C. at the time, but I was nowhere near the Pentagon or anything like that. But Rich is going to dive in. So without further ado, let's all welcome Rich. Rich, welcome. So tell us, Rich. How, how, what, what was going through your mind? What, what, what happened? Well, um, again, it was a regular Wednesday, right? As everybody, you know, would have expected, right? Like what was, uh, mm-hmm. no, you know, everybody remembers, you know, nine ten, right? It was every day for us, right? So I was mm-hmm. heading to work in the morning. And again, I worked downtown for a company called uh, Thompson Financial, which was on uh, like uh, 195 Broadway. So um, not mm-hmm. far from Wall Street you know, very close to the trade center. In fact, it was two blocks away from the trade center. And I had a meeting in the morning and I forgot my uh, laptop power cord. So, you know, Mm -hmm. as a salesperson and things like that, you're always with your laptop, you know, you kind of take it everywhere you go. And I was just to go and Mm -hmm. the meeting happened to be downtown. So I said, great, let me whip to the office. I'll grab my, you know, um, Mm -hmm. my uh, cord and I'll, um, you know, um, I'll head out. So, uh, I'm on the subway heading toward in and I started to hear like chatter and rumor about planes hitting the trade center, possibly something in, in like, um, uh, like a five or whatever, you know, a few minutes later, somebody says something about the Pentagon, you know? So in mm-hmm. my head, I'm like, okay, uh, you know, I'm very familiar with downtown. You know, again, I went to school there, uh, mm-hmm. worked there, you know, a lot, you know, things have hit the trade center before right? it's, you know, helicopter blade. Mm-hmm and kind of other things and it was basically kind of a you know a wash right yeah it fixed you know didn't really do much damage or kind of things like that so just like you know any other regular day yeah because from my understanding it's actually engineered to take some hits right as yeah when what i've learned like probably a lot of other people after 9 11 that it's actually a cone like an upside down cone right it has no middle kind of structure all the, the weight bearingness and everything like that is on is on the outside. So they say it's like if you were a fly going into a, a web, you know, you'd probably just kind of like go either go right through it or just you wouldn't do damage to the whole thing. Uh, you know, from what I understand, nobody considered a a, a, a jet plane fuel uh, full of fuel. You know, and you know, jet fuel is mm-hmm. very different than regular fuel. You know. So uh, they didn't, you know, I guess in design, they didn't take that in consideration, but why would they? I got a, um, a station away um, um, and because um, the trains were already starting, you know, uh, you know, again, shit was already starting to hit the fan and this and that. So I had to get off at Wall Street and walk. Now, again, I'm thinking, okay, it's bad, right? You know, I've never heard of anything like this before. But that walk from the train station, you know, to to my office, which and I'm now heading toward the, you know, the Twin Towers. Mm-hmm. And it's, and um, it was uh, the experience of coming out, just happened to be one of the train stations where uh, when you came out from underground, you would have this amazing, perfect, you know, centralized view of the Trade Center, right? So that was like my first experience. Uh, you know, both planes had already hit, but they were both standing and burning. And um, so the other thing, I, again, I want to just mention about that day, and you may have heard about it and people kind of talk about it, but the that 9-11 sky. I've heard about the smoke in that, Ed. I, I, I've seen right. things the, where people said it seemed like, looked like a demon in the sky. And, no, no. Well, the smoke well, was and the bellowingness of that burning, right. you know, it, it's like you think. It's, you know, kind of smoky. It's moving with the, you know, with mm-hmm. the, you know. No, but I'm talking about the sky before, right? 
there again and again some people talk about it and again i don't know if it was you know so, you know such a localized system but this had to be the most amazing blue sky that i have ever seen in my entire life it was a noticeable violet and so if you ever kind of come across it and stuff like that you'll hear that now was there any type of weird or eerie feeling or anything unusual feeling that, that you got while you was heading to work or it was just a normal well, feeling no, 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 no. This dude, you knew shit changed. Uh, well, one, you know, we all had, you know, uh, 2001 cell phones, right? They were basically mm -hmm. just flip phones. So everybody was trying to get on a phone, obviously, and or got called. Mm -hmm. None of the, none of the phones were working. Right? Uh, the actual, you know, main antenna for the uh, cell phones is actually on the twin towers. So. Um, you know, I'm now kind of calling and looking to see if I can, you know, contact home, this and that. But again, walking from Wall Street to John Street, uh, again, might be five, you know, six blocks. You know, again, that's old, that old, you know, downtown brick, you know, was, um, there was nobody on the street. The traffic was already closed. Um, so, you know, you heard, you know, sirens and again, you're staring at the, the, the building. And then what I didn't know at the time was I started to see material hitting like smokily or firely kind of starting to hit the ground. So there was a lot of paper, half burnt, things like that raining down mm -hmm. that I wow. wasn't, you know, kind of expecting, you know, again, this is a lot of posting. I, um, you know, I saw like shoes and kind of things like that that you knew were not regularly kind of there. It was like always like kind of something, right? And so with the lack of any foot traffic, any car traffic, the subways weren't running, and the surrealness of that moment as a walk, you know, that five block walk, I'll kind of never forget. Again, always on your phone, always, you know, you, you know, this is the first kind of like, again, smack in the face that, you know, that we got as Americans like that. Don't, don't even know really what to do. You know, so what was your reaction? It's like you got this eerie feeling, it's just like a scene out of a movie, and you just standing there alone on the street with your flip phone with no service. What was going through your mind at that point? Well, strange, there's two main things going through my one is that again, this you know, desire for this electric cord, you know, again, it's like that, that I think the most the very different part of like you know, how we perceive work. Right. You know, so, I, you know, mm -hmm. I had a job to do. Right. I had to go get my cord, you know, uh, you know, so I can be ready for, you know, this 10 o'clock meeting, you know, you know, that I should have no problem. With. But again, it was, you know, uh, so that and having to go to the bathroom, I had to like, you know, I had to pee for like since I was on the subway. So I figured, you know, both of <laughs> those things were driving me toward my building. Um, you know, uh, like, and, and as I mentioned before, things happen like into the trade center, right? Things happen in New York. You know, it really didn't, you know, no yeah. one knew. I didn't think that anything like that was weird, you know, or, or, or kind of something. A lot of people kept asking me, why, why did you get closer? You know, and it was like, you know, I had a job to do. You know, I was like, you know, I didn't think they were going to come down. Did you ever make it to the office to get that cord? You know, I got to the corner. Uh, the building was already shut down. They want, you know, kind of nothing going on. And the, as I like, so I was on the corner of John and Maiden Lane, right? So, mm -hmm. um, again, if New Yorkers or anyone who's been a kind of a tourist will know that, like literally across the street from the Trade Center. Um, so, uh, no, I kind of was hanging out actually since I couldn't get into the building. I was like, okay, my day is clearly changed, right? I'm gonna have to call my client, cancel, and this, but there's action going on, right? So I'm like, <laughs> I can't turn around. The subways are kind of closed and stuff. So I figured I'd wait it out. But again, you know, that was the actual part of it. Yeah, so in a way you are stranded. Yeah. I really you didn't have anywhere to go. And you got to pee. That's a bad combination. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because you have the, at least uh, find so somewhere I, to relieve yourself. <laughs> and again, I have no problem with a little, you know, when, you know, in public, when you got to go, when, you know, when you got to go, you got to go. But that time it was hey, cops. Yeah, yeah environment and shit floating all over the place right this was not a place that you know i was not on you know, but i was kind of resting on a cop car with a few other you know uh pedestrian strander and i was watching the helicopters that were on top of the trade center 
and we were like kind of discussing like, hey, it, oh, they must have people up there. This must be like a rescue, you know. And you know, the, mm-hmm. the whole time this is now kind of building that this isn't like a regular, you know, kind of accident, a regular this. You're getting bits and pieces of information from other people, you know. So um, you know, when the smoke kind of cleared or we can kind of see it, I was watching, you know, the uh helicopters until the building uh fell down. Wow. Because I'm not mistaken, they fell down with within an hour and a half or so. Of it, being it little, I, yeah, I can't remember exactly how long it took the buildings to fall. Oh, they were like within like anywhere. I think one of the buildings was 45 minutes after getting hit. And the other yeah. one was 30 minutes after getting hit. Right. And um, so, again, I have, you know, when I have shared this story before, a lot of people ask me, you know, what, why'd you stay? Like, you know, what, what, like, wasn't it like a clear, obvious that you were, you know, in danger. And I'm like, I didn't think that at all, right? So people who have seen it from a distance in Manhattan said that the building was wobbling. And I, again, how the hell would I know? You know, I'm kind of looking straight up at it from, like, from the bottom. Now, but, how far um, away were you from the buildings at this point? Two, like two, like uh, two city blocks. Wow. Actually, one, one city block. I'm on the corner, and then there's like a street like asphalt and then there's the trade center so across the street so at this point in in your mind are you did it ever occur to you like wow okay everything shut down i'm stranded how am i going to get home and i don't have good cell phone service did that ever come to your mind like how am i how am i going to get home what am i going to do not at that point you know again at my my strategy at that point was to wait it out you know just let you know they'll put the fire out you know, they'll reopen the streets, you know, eventually. And, you know, mm-hmm. and again, okay. hopefully um, my plan for, yeah, uh, exit didn't happen until later on. <laughs> so uh, are you getting, so y'all just sitting there and y'all watching helicopters, Yeah, you know, fly around the building and you're just seeing it burn. So you're watching both towers now at this point, I, I take it. Right. Yeah. You're looking at both well, sides. is a little obscured by the other, you know, depending on what, you know, set certain angles, you can't really, you know, see it all. So at this, yes, point, yeah. was any, at this point, was anybody talking about a terrorist attack or anything, or she thought maybe it was an accident, or did you nothing even know open. that a plane had hit? Yeah, nothing open, but, uh, like, again, when I heard something in the subway about the Pentagon, right, so when I put, you know, Trade Center hit, Pentagon hit, you know, I knew this wasn't an average thing, but not, not, there was no scuttle about uh, about like terrorism or anything like that at the site at the time. You know, it's just like you a- just think, oh, how ironic! Two planes just flew into the yeah. World Trade Center, <laughs> and uh, again, <laughs> and everybody's no- been talking about it. Well, yeah. everything's closed down today. I guess we get a day off. The um, kind of the other part about my perspective uh, about that is, you know, um, I always, you know, as I'm a, you know currently a futurist, uh, you know, a, a strategic forecaster. But I've always felt I've been doing that, I think, in the in my whole life in some form, right? Mm-hmm. So I was a relatively well-read person, you know, at that time, right? And um, and and in my media life, I've connected with a magazine called Foreign Affairs. It's still around today. It's like a quarterly or something. And it's just like, mm-hmm. you know, it, I'm, and I happen to kind of always, they used to have boxes of it, like laying around in the corner. So one day I kind of picked one up and found, you know, again, very, you know, amazing views you know serious discussion about american foreign policy and and, and global affairs right mm-hmm. and again if you if you do any research on prior you know the months or years you know or like a year prior to 9 11 everybody knew this was coming i mean I'm, i was reading you know mm-hmm. like articles and you know um, you know whatever uh, you know, papers from you know colleagues political who are using the word you know not if, but when, right? And so you hear that a lot. Oh, you're going to catch COVID. No, I mean, not if, but when, you know, like all that kind of stuff. But it was like, we knew a terrorist attack was coming, right? Or at least, you know, again, yeah. I did, you know. So yeah, then, did we know exactly it how so it was coming though? I didn't know how, right, yeah. But when, if you would have told me, hey, this is a terrorist attack, I was like, oh, okay. I, I mean, I, you know, it was coming. Everybody else kind of knew, you know, like, so I wasn't that surprised or at least even even post the experience and stuff like that, that, you know, 
Uh, I mean, I knew it terror, mm-hmm. you know, again, I didn't want to be in it. You know, I didn't want how it affected our country, you know, in a negative way or any of the, you know, parts about it. But I wasn't mm-hmm. surprised. I don't think, I don't think a lot of people like in Washington or, you know, again, in that kind of global affairs sphere uh, was surprised. Really either, which didn't know. Yeah, we didn't know it was going to be this, but. So now you're sitting out, you're sitting by a police car and you're watching with the crowd and y'all watching. And now you see the buildings collapse. Right. What well, now? <laughs> okay. So um, <laughs> first it was, I heard the building collapse, right? Okay. So I was kind of still, you know, lamping on the police car kind of thing. Like, you know, and now you hear this. Again, I, again, I can never do it justice, but it's just, just cracking. Loudest cracking sound you ever heard in your entire life. And uh, even, you know, I've never been able to, it's, you know. Well, anyway, I heard it. And which drew my attention, you know, to the like the specific building and you know whatever happened, and I started to see the first pieces hit the ground. And again, that's like you know, again, I don't know if it's a great you know honor or you know curse, but I have a clear memory of seeing the one of the corner pieces of the roof of the trade center hit the ground, um, wow. just kind of like at the corner, right? Um, but visually, that was it. Because I was high, you know, I was running at that point, <laughs> right after that point. <laughs> I was gonna say, at that point, I, you just yeah. seen a corner hit the ground. I just, oh, yeah, y'all I just, off at this point. <laughs> yeah, I was like, at this point, you know, and it was it was wild. It was kind of because, again, it was a bunch of us on this car. It was like I, the one thing I caught at the corner of my eye as I was leaving, it was just watching everybody else, like, kind of flee. It almost like it was like we did it like in, in like in, like, like it was organized. We all kind of like got up and left and ran all like kind of in different directions, but it was just, again, a very surreal moment there that, you know, uh, kind of, you know, running. I yeah, tell you, the so police started, officers were running with you. Well, there, there were some, but again, it, it hard, you know, it was horrible to, you know, to know that there was a lot of guys running in, you know, while we were running out. You know, it was one of the things I really didn't like it as a man and shit. But, um, what yeah. you tell it because you got to realize uh, those men, brave men and women that that ran in were trained. If you right. tried to run in there and untrained, you may have just been in their way and caused more problems than good. So yeah. sometimes and the again, best thing if you're untrained is to to get away from that situation. Yeah, and they had a job to do. You know, again, in that kind mm-hmm. of another aspect, you know, they they're not paid to turn around when it gets hard, or if it's too hot or shit like that, right? So, um, you know, they're all running in and, um, I was, you know, again, as I think, you know, over the years when I thought about it, the story I just told you about sitting around on, on the police car waiting again, there were trucks and cars and ambulances all passing me all the time. I'm assuming a lot of those guys, they never made it out. You know, it's like, you know, made eye contact with a few of those guys, you know, like, you know, anyway. And that was the question I was going to ask you. Was there any particular person besides the building falling that stood out to you? Yeah. Well, post. You mean post or pre or? Well, doing doing it. You know, it's like okay, oh, once the building collapse, you know, there the, like yes. you got the the scene of the roof falling and hitting the ground. That's forever riveted into your mind. Right. Is there any so, other moments that just stick into your mind? Well, yeah, well, again, there's a lot that happens like really from that point, right? So as I started running, the ground started shaking. A lot of people don't realize it. We had something like a 6.3 on a Richter scale of the building, you know, shaking the ground that it was coming down. And I'd never been in an earthquake before. So running in an earthquake was kind of weird, you know, kind of too. You're kind of like, kind of trying, you know, uh, you know, plus, you know, you're in lizard brain, right? You're not thinking straight, whatever. You're just thinking, you know, get my ass out of here. And mm-hmm. the storefront, the storefront windows, as I was running down the street, were all shattering as I was like running by it, you know? So you had that noise, wow. you know, the kind of like a rolling thunder, metal, concrete, you know, and then the ground shaking and then the glass breaking and then, you know, me running and I'm still carrying my laptop, right? A lot of people always ask why I carried my laptop the whole time. I like your phone. You, you're going to grab your phone. Yeah. Every contact I have, everything I've been doing, you know, it's, it's kind of like in this bag. So I'm not, I'm running and um, it like, 
it took me like a block to realize that I was, you know, there was like some kind of rap, you know, realization that I'm going to die, right? Like, I'm not going to outrun this building. Uh, it's going to crush me. You know, it's like, I don't, you know, it's a, it's a quarter of a mile tall, right? So as I was running, you know, like, and I guess, you know, I passed that first block and I'm, as you, pro you probably can't tell from, you know, our interaction, and especially with my sexy DJ voice, you know, I'm a little on the heavy side, right? So, you know, I'm, you know, running, you know, so, um, the adrenaline bouncing, you know, and all, you know, again, uh, the, the noise and, you know, the, again, the thunderous kind of thing and thinking that I'm going to die. So every couple of like steps I took, I went, okay, I'm going to die. And then I didn't die. Right. So I was like, all right, let me, uh, 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 the, the next step. You know, so I kept like almost, you know, counting them, mm -hmm. like, you know, like whenever it is like, this is it, this is death. Like, I didn't know. Right. And, um, I, st you know, again, knowing, you know, um, you know, I was running for my life thinking that I wasn't going to make the next, every kind of next step. And again, fucking tour, uh, tour <laughs> terrorists and, you know, kind of like, you know, uh, you know, again, a slap in the face to America. Like we we're under attack. Right. You know, like, all of this mm -hmm. kind of going on. So I was like, all right, I got to come up with, you know, what's kind of kind of going through my mind. And I was thinking about like, uh, you know, Biggie Small's last words, you know, it's like I spit and spit phrases that will thrill you. No, you know, you're nobody until mm -hmm. somebody kills you. Right. Like, and so I'm like, all right, this is my Biggie moment. And I got, you know, Rich goes down, you know, with the terrorists and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I didn't have enough, you know, but I, what I was mainly thinking about was, uh, you know, my daughter. I only had like my daughter was born in July and that was September. I only had three months. So I was like, oh, man, I only oh, wow. get three months with my, you know, with my baby. You know, I was like, oh, that sucks, you know. So. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I didn't die. My death never came, <laughs> you know, so. You know, How far had you gotten for you really felt like you could take that deep breath? Like, oh, God, I, you know, I'm, I'm five blocks away now. I think I'm good. Yeah. Again, uh, you, you know, I thought I was a lot faster, but I really didn't get far. Um, and that moment really never came to me uh, because I was running away from a poisonous plume. Right. So, yeah. uh, you know, I, uh, you know, <laughs> as I was running, uh, and again, realized that, you know, I got, maybe I got some more time. Let me, you know, so I picked up my pace a little bit more, but that whole time I was looking behind me because there was this big black plume chasing me again with the noise. You got, you have to remember the noise is always going on right, during this mm -hmm. whole time. Cause I didn't realize there was an earthquake that, that happened with that. Yeah. But that, I mean, it all makes sense now. So, yeah. So and Again, I realize, you know, my Olympic running days are, you know, and I thought I made it a lot further, right? But it was, mm -hmm. it never happened. And then the plume took me over. It literally knocked me to the ground. Um, wow. And, um, and then going back to what you said, and, you know, I was running that whole time. And again, not a professional runner. I was out of breath and everything like that. So when it knocked me to the ground, every breath I took was full of that shit. And it didn't help there was not a lot of oxygen so i was i felt like i was drowning i was just coughing on the ground rolling you know everything's kind of going on the noise is still kind of going on and then as soon as i can kind of try to exhale and try to take another again uh you know uh just another mouthful of filth and shit and kind of rolling on the ground and th again i'm like okay you know this is it right you know here i am you know i guess i'm just gonna die squirming on the street but when I mean, you talk about the most important people, you know, who come across your life, a doorman from a building like across the street comes out, grabs me by my jacket and pulls me into his building. Oh, wow. And it's could like not, an angel. you know, in a million years. Right. You know, uh, you know, uh, just kind of like by the, you know, and, you know, helping them a little bit. I see other people, you know, kind of heading in that direction as well. So he gets in and I'm like, the, he closes the door behind me. And the last thing, you know, and the last person I'm like vomiting, you know, just kind of like, again, just, you know, I'm all gray, you know, my, you know, all the way across my eyes, a cake full of shit and, you know, whatever. But, you know, he gets me up, you know, I'm like, you know, clean, try to clean off my face and, you know, whatever. And there is actually air in this, you know, in this lobby. Mm -hmm. 
so um, I'm I can kind of starting to catch a little bit of my breath, right? Um, so uh, you know, there's a tide of people from the streets or from the building, probably you know, upstairs or whatever, all in this you know in this lobby. It's packed full of people. Some people are coughing, some people are crying. You know, everyone's just like kind of unsure again. The noise outside, the ground shaking. You know, kind of not. You know. So I, um, he's like an angel. He was like your angel that appeared. Yeah, you know, that's why I you actually, have to be nice to people. So whenever you know, getting back to downtown was really hard. Like right? eventually, you know, uh, uh, you know, it was, a, it was basically a criminal. You know, uh, you know, uh, it's lunchtime, and you had to um, drink water. I had to get escorted around and stuff. Well, once it finally started opening up again, I retraced my steps. I wanted to see how far I got, really, you know, because I thought I ran mm -hmm. all the way to like Water Street, which is like on the, <laughs> on the other side of the island. And I realized I didn't make it no like no further than a block and a half, right? From like the top wow. like that, from the like, John Street, like or maybe two blocks, if you want to call it. And then I mm -hmm. actually found the building, you know, that I took refuge in. And the guy who was the doorman there was the doorman there. And I was, I recognized him. And I was like, dude, I got to tell you, you saved my life. You know, I'm like, and he's like, ah, you know, he's like, <laughs> not even like, you know, I'm like, no, you know, he was like, it's a, it was a crazy day. You know, we're like, you know, a lot was going on, you know, whatever. I, you know, he was like, I did. And I'm like, no, man, you saved my life. And I was like, I, I, like, can I do something for you? Like, you know. Um, like uh, sports tickets, you know, can I send you a Christmas card every year? Can I do something? A, a cup of coffee? Can I go to Starbucks right now and get you a cup of coffee? And he wouldn't take it. Um, wow. Yeah. That, 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 that's cool. Have you seen him since then? Nah, nah. <laughs> you, you don't know. Downtown was kind of closed off for a long time. You know, it was kind of like, I would go back. I eventually did get into my building. Again, that's a kind of another story, you know, but um, no, nah, that was my last connection with him. Wow. Did, did, did you, well, I guess camera phones wasn't as big back then to take a picture Nothing and everything. Like no. it, our technology yeah, was just it. getting Star there. Yeah. You know, one thing that I don't know if you ever thought about, you know, it's, a, it's one thing to survive having this plume and trying to breathe through this plume, but it's you're lucky you didn't get trampled by the running crowd once you fell down. I'm going to have to go, yes, only, you know, um, um, yeah, I, I never thought of it that way. Yeah, they're, you know. Because um, you got to think, people, they can't see either, and you got they, people no one running. See, yeah, it yeah. doesn't surprise and, me. And you fall down, and no one step on you and trip on you and keep running over you because they're gasping for air and life as well. Yeah. there were, You know, I and, and I still get, unfortunately, to experience that scenario. It's a little later on in the story. I don't know if you want to know more about like what happens inside the building or. Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about that. You ski on okay. That's our next se segment, Escaping the Tower. You just gave us Inside the Chaos. So now let's yeah. go into Escaping so, the Tower. Yeah. So last we left, we find Rich sitting, uh, standing in a lobby, you know, full of people. And <laughs> so there's instruction from like, I guess the fire warden or whatever is you know, mm -hmm. for people to leave the lobby and go into the basement. And there were like, the doors were opening up and, you know, there was a, like a shuffle, you know, kind of almost a tide of people, you know, just kind of, I'm sure you might know that from like being like at concerts or something like that. You just, or mm -hmm. so, you know, you're just going with the flow. You're not even like, you don't have a choice. So I'm like going with the flow. And then I, I'm like, there's something about, being in the basement right now did not make sense, you know, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to kind of pass on this basement thing. And so I was able to kind of sidestep the the crowd as they were going down and there was a spiral staircase. It was an old, you know, Manhattan building and had those small stair, you know, small step stair, uh, spiral staircase. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, I'd rather, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die on a higher floor. I'm not dying in no basement. So, yeah, um, buried in. yeah. So at this point I actually it was first time I got to sit down. And I sat on some of those stairs, and by that time, the the power went out in the building. So we were all in, you know, it was just black. And um, uh, the, um, but it was the air inside the, the stairway was 
still mm-hmm. cleaner now than the area that was in the, you know, in the lobby. And it was literally just kind of like that zone. Now, was there so a lot of crowded? Like, was, was there a lot of people in that lobby? Packed, as I'm saying, like you couldn't oh, okay. it was it was okay, just yeah. like an ocean of people. And again, you didn't have a choice to where you wanted to go and stuff. Mm-hmm. So um, I uh, was able to catch my breath a little further in the stairway as a little bit more cl- kind of cleaner air. So uh, again, it's pitch black. You know, I'm now like, oh, let me go up, you know, <laughs> like, so I'm now feeling the walls and like trying to feel where the stairs are and kind of going around. And again, there's just chaos going on everywhere. And I reached the next floor and the door's locked. Uh, most people know in, that in fire situations, every other floor is open, right? So I know this door is locked. That means the door on top of me has to be open. So I do it again. And I, again, I, there was some, a lot of flashbacks to me about stairs and darkness and things like that. I don't, you know, I don't kind of like that where, you know, before it probably would have never even made a difference to me. So I feel my way up to the next floor and the door opens and um, I go in and it, again, it's pitch black, but you know, you can kind of see and hear that there's like people and I, um, you know, I'm feeling my way around, you know, and everyone's, you know, like just to, like just to have a wall, right? So I can follow this wall, you know, let's just see what happens. And every once in a while, I come across a person who's kind of standing there or kind of something like that. And I think the floor ended up being a, uh, it's like a, a medical offices, or I seem to be a lot of medical people there. So I, I kind of felt my way around and finally found an empty spot and just slid down the wall, you know, again, with my laptop and, you know, my, you know. And that was it. I was like, okay, you know, I'm probably going to be living here for a while or whatever it is or dying here or, you know. So uh, the emergency, you know, um, um, you know, uh, speaker comes on, you know, against the fire warden. They're like, uh, stay where you are. We don't know what to do. <laughs> you know. And my favorite part is, is conserve your breathing. You know, I was like, oh, well, awesome. I'm going to be like skip breathing for the rest of, you know, for the rest of my life here. So I'm trying not to, you know, over breathe and I turn around and I, there's a woman sitting next to me. And again, I really can't see her and you know, I can tell she's a woman and all that. And I ask her if she's okay. You know, I'm like, you know, I go, you know, and she said that she was, and then, uh, you know, I was like, you know, you, we don't know how we're all getting home and all of that. You know, I, this is when I started thinking about, you know, if I survive, how do I get home from here? And I asked her, you know, if she was, okay, did she have a place to stay? You know, is your, you know, like something like that. And she goes, yeah, I have a hotel uptown. I just flew in from LA and I had an interview, you know, at the trade center and I was running late and the running Mm. late from the airport saved her life. So, so she was also outside the building kind of standing by me, conserving her oxygen, you know, not knowing what we were going to do, you know, waiting for kind of some other things. So, I do come across, and every once in a while, I'm sure in the news and things like you come across a lot of people who, like, you know, were sick that day, you know, didn't go in. The kid had something to do in school, so they didn't go. There were, like, a lot of these kind of random scenarios, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, so this lady flew in. So she's, you know, I kind of gave her some instruction on how to walk from downtown to uptown because she was never going to get, you know, a train or a cab or anything like that. But, um a few minutes later, you know, uh, the the, uh, the speaker comes on again. They're like, okay, uh, we're seeing police outside our building. You know, please come to your, you know, exit or whatever, you know, your nearest exit. So, you know, now we're all in dark shuffling, you know, trying to get to the stairs. And we get to the stairs and there's a little bit more light because a lot of other doors seem to be open and people moving around. Now, they didn't and have any I, emergency lighting there. Emergency lighting did not work. Uh, the speakers wow. definitely work. Yeah. But um, um, so I eventually, you know, again, uh, you were talking about the crowds and, you mm-hmm. know, kind of different things. I've never, more, uh, and there's, again, there's more to the story, but I've never been more, that experience made me, I've never been more proud to be a New Yorker in my entire life. And I'll show you examples. So we get outside, and I finally get outside the building, passing that lobby, you know, where, you know, all that, and it was snowing. I called nuclear snow. You know, so the, the the noise wasn't as bad anymore, you know, but, you know, it was just all gray and all snow. It was all dust and shit and, you know, whatever it was kind of coming out. I call it nuclear snow because God knows what the hell was in it. 
Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I had, a, I guess, if you want to call it enough sense about historically, and I went and grabbed a handful of it and, you know, put it in my, you know, put it in my bag as a kind of memento of my freaking experience. Um, now, um, so the next chapter is Rich Gets Home. Do you kind of want to ask anything or is there something more? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean that, that, that's great. So yeah, you finally get out of the building, and right. so what? What now? You out of the building, and you in this nuclear snowstorm? Yeah. So kind of looking around, and now I'm, you know, and I got a perspective again. Like I remembered now where mm -hmm. I am. Right. You know, I was like, okay, I'm, you know, I'm on, I'm downtown. I'm in, you know, I'm on John Street someplace. You know, mm -hmm. and I now have my coordinates. Now, as I kind of mentioned before. I went to school downtown, right? I went to Pace University. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew every nook and cranny, you know, that it was our campus. And that's another personal reason I don't like the the whole trade center thing because they took my campus away. Um, so I knew every nook and cranny of downtown, right? So I'm like, okay, now I know where I am. I'm very close to the Brooklyn you, Bridge. I just feel a little bit better now. Well, I realized I'm not dying, you know? So like I, I had come to realize that this is not, where I go, you know, or it's early, you know, but mm -hmm. you know, the, this part <laughs> is seems to be over. Like, I you know I'm not going to get squished. Let's just say, leave it, you know, so now, um, uh, so yeah, now I'm trying to figure out next steps and, you know, right. So in the middle down, you know, downtowns, it's snowing. And there, again, everyone is every five seconds is trying to get their phone to work. Right. So everyone's kind of, you know, call and try and get no doubt. No, there's no tone. There's no nothing. So, you know, we're all, everyone I can see on the street, you know, kind of. So I was like, okay, I know how to get to the Brooklyn Bridge from here. It's, I'm as, that's as close to, you know, from a guy, I have to get to Queens. Um, so I'll walk to the Brooklyn Bridge and I'll walk over it, you know, and get to Brooklyn and hope, you know, find it, you know, I could, I don't know, even if I have to walk, I guess, so I'll eventually make it to Queens. So, um, so now I'm meandering the streets and I'm running into other gray people, right? Okay. One of the, on the way, some storefront opened up, I guess, after the guy, you know, again, we're all kind of coming out of hiding and opened up his storefront and started handing out bottles of Poland Spring. You know, and I thought that was, a, you know, you know, you know again, nice. for like ground zero and shit like that, you know, whatever, you know. So I was, you know, I obviously took one and I took an extra one because I wanted to give to this one guy. He was standing on the corner, like in shock. So I used it immediately to wash my face and rinse out my mouth and nose and shit. I didn't even drink any of it. God, I, so I started kind of like, you know, cleaning myself. And I went to this guy who was just literally standing there, you know, caked gray everywhere, this and that. And I'm like, come on, come on. It's over. It's over. Come on. You know, let's have some, you know, have some water, have some water. It's for you. So um, I think that, you know, he got him moving again, you know, and, you know, like, and he kind of came out of his like, you know, kind of zombie stage and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I, I found a few people like that, you know, was able to kind of like, hey, we're all going this way. Come, this is the bridge. This is the bridge. So, you know, and um, now, uh, so I'm, again, I know I'm heading in the right direction. You know, again, I'm, I'm gathering people left and right people, you know, not everybody, but, you know, uh, about you know, whatever, five people I must have, you know, at least pointed the direction, right? If not, kind of shuck them out of their zone. And so on the way, I found there was a payphone, right? Mm -hmm. So a little a old school. Pay phone. For our millennials, let them know what a payphone is. Payphone, <laughs> back in the day, we used yeah, to actually yeah. have phones set up on a corner that, that you put, I think it eventually went up to like a quarter, I a think, quarter, back in the day. Yeah. A quarter, you put a quarter, which is a coin, for you millennials, <laughs> you could dial a number and you had, that's how you call people when you didn't have cell phones. Yeah, when you didn't have cell phones, right. So, we, you know, clearly we had cell phones, you know, but phones were kind of dying, but, you know, again, they were very valuable, you know, still at that time. And it was a lot, you know, so it was a pay phone. And apparently, since it was a line there, it was working. And I'd assume that the landlines would probably work because they're all in the ground, you know, mm -hmm. kind of made sense. So I was like, I got to let, you know, my wife know that I'm alive you know, or kind of something, right? So I wait on the line, you know, which I'm assuming, uh, maybe I should, I just thought it was going to take a long time. But again, New Yorkers were awesome. Everybody was quick. You know, if you needed a quarter, because not a lot of people were carrying money, you know, back then, those, you know, 
they were handing out money, whatever you wanted. Boom, boom, boom. Like I got to the phone, made contact, said, Hey, I'm alive. I have no idea how I'm getting home. You know, kiss my baby, mm-hmm. my, you know, my son for me. And I will contact you, you know, as soon as I know something else. And, you know, a little, you know, loving change and then, you know, kind of go. So, you know, I'm hightailing it now toward, you know, quick step toward the uh, Brooklyn Bridge. And this is kind of like, you know, one of the kind of amazing parts of, I think, where this story goes, or at least what it, you know, what it does, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I get on the Brooklyn Bridge, like proper, right? It was like, you know, you have, there's like a ramping and stuff that kind of gets on it, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm just on the Brooklyn Bridge going over the water part. And the bridge is packed, right? As you can imagine, right? So we're, I'm finally like, like, let's just say, you know, uh, kind of on the actual bridge part. And this is also, I think, in the first time in my life, other than the plume, that I looked over my shoulder. Because I was like, if there's another plane out here, this bridge is an awesome, yeah. you know, it's full of people, you know, and, and it's chaos. And there's fire trucks trying to come one way and people walking the other way. And But now we're not at least in the plume, right? Um, mm-hmm. So... You know, so now you can see it. It's just like this big black area, you know, kind of where, you know, downtown was. And again, the most beautiful violet sky everywhere else. And, you know, and uh, so I get on the Brooklyn Bridge and it's starting to kind of the plume is kind of starting to catch up a little bit. And then the second building falls. Oh, man. Right? So then I hear the same kind of cracking kind of, you know. You know, and it, it, it took me like again, I guess a, a few kind of seconds to realize what was going on, right? Like it's the other building, you know, like oh shit. Now there's another plume heading my way, but at least I wasn't across the street from it, right? I'm at mm-hmm. least five blocks or ten blocks away. So the whole um whole bridge starts running, and the plume of the other thing is starting is kind of heading this way. And I'm thinking I had enough, right? Let me try to yeah. keep going, you know. But anytime somebody fell down, anytime something like that, you know, there were people ready, pick you up, would carry you to the, you know, to the next side or whatever like that. I've seen it. Wow. I did it. I did everything like that. So, yeah, if there was, you know, kind of what I would say, like, you know, the city was being attacked by Godzilla and everybody was running. No, no, there nobody. It wasn't, you know, you know. Everyone for himself. Did that feeling of diff when you uh, come back over you once you heard the second building fall down? Uh, or well, seen like it, it? It wasn't, and it, like I didn't think I was immediately going to die, but I knew it, where I was was not good, uh-huh. right? Yes. Yeah, so well, here we go again. Yeah, being in the plume definitely didn't seem kind of right, too, right? So, uh, and I, again, I don't know what else is going on, right? We all know, you know, there's no other planes, but no one knew what this, you know. I mean, I mean, the president mm-hmm. was supposed to shoot anything in the sky down. Now, here's the fucked up part about this story. And at least it took me like a day or whatever, I guess, because I started going through the newspapers and stuff like that. The time I told you that the first building fell down, mm-hmm. right? That was the question. It was mm-hmm. nine fifty? Was nine fifty nine a.m. Right. Mm-hmm. The time the second building came down was ten thirty seven a.m. That entire thing that I told you, that entire mm-hmm. story, was thirty six minutes long. Wow. I was going to ask you about that. The timing, because when you tell me the timeline that you were saying, I'm like, man, that seemed like you spent hours, you know, in my mind, it's like, okay, you went into the building, you ran, and it's like, you went into this building, and uh, they they gave you refuge, and that was about an hour or two, and then you made your walk over to the Brooklyn Bridge, and maybe that was about another phone call. Then you made a phone call, and then you got on the bridge. Yeah, it it sounded like about a four or five hour event. (laughs) Right. I was like, I was reading it in a newspaper and, they, you know, it was like the one of the first days that they, they actually had like a, a, like a, a countdown. First building got hit by this, second, you know, mm-hmm. second building got hit by this, first building. And then I noticed the delta difference between the two buildings. And I was like, wait a minute, how can it have been 36 minutes? It, like I'm saying, it felt like a lifetime or like you're at least a right, a one hour per event, right? Mm-hmm. So you got this plume chasing you and you all are getting across the bridge. So... You finally, obviously, made it across the yeah, bridge. I stayed ahead of the plume. I made, I made folk. I made a point to not stop. I was like, just keep going, right? I had um, so a little bit of a side note, but I had recently read a book uh, or a series of books called Left Behind. 
it's like a kind of a Christian revelations meets James Bond, right? And they mm-hmm. tried to make some movies on it and never really did good, but it was basically like what happens, you know, after, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what is it when everybody goes into, like uh, some people kind of go like into heaven to get like being that, that it's like that one. That, uh, purgatory. No, no, no. It's like the, that day that it happens. Oh, oh the day of Pentecost. So what, what do they call it? Uh, oh, it was, it would be on the tip of my uh, tongue. Oh, oh, the rap. Is it like the rapture? The rapture, the rapture it was like yeah. Yeah, the rapture, right? So it was like, what happens like 10 minutes after the rapture? Right, like ha- like mm-hmm. a third of the planet disappears, like they or me automatically go to heaven. Right, everybody else is mm-hmm. left behind. That's the story of the book. And so planes are dropping because pilots are gone, cars. You know, everyone's like not sure. And and so what I learned from this book, and everyone, please use this as you know, if I'm moving on, because who knows if the end of the world isn't still that far away. Is you keep moving, right? You keep you get from this corner to that corner. You get from this corner to that garbage can, you know, to get to mm-hmm. your next you know, place. You never stop. You get to the next part. No time to rest. You keep going. You keep moving. Keep moving is the best. Just keep swimming. Like, the, you know, kind of said in, in uh, Dory says in, uh, in uh, Nemo, just keep moving. It makes a very big difference, you know, and I think it made a very big difference to me. I almost felt like I had like a little bit of like inside training. You know, I was like, mm-hmm. don't stop. Keep going. Keep going. You know. So once you get across that bridge, when you finally made it across the bridge, what was that feeling like at that point? Well, again, I knew I wasn't there, but I was in, you know, um, I guess downtown Brooklyn now with loads of people. Again, a lot of emergency vehicles trying to get in, in a, but, you know, not snowy, you know. I, you know, by this time, you know, that whole kind of walk from the bridge to the time I got to like, the like because there's a Long Island Railroad. I lived on Long Island at the time. There's a Long Island Railroad on J Street, like kind of in J Street. So again, I'm born and raised in New Yorker. I knew that was there. So I said, and, and it's also a subway line. So I was like, all right, there might be something there. Let me go. So I started as I was meandering. And also, if you remember, the second thing that I wanted to do at 9 39 was to go to the bathroom i still had to pee that this whole time oh right? i thought you had already peed by this point yeah no where in the darkness in the freaking snow you know you know like nah you know it's like most so people would have peed on themselves by now <laughs> <laughs> so i figured this would be my chance to find a place to pee right so mm-hmm. um you know I'm, I'm like brushing myself off you know, like, so by the time I actually got to, like, you know, the station, I didn't look all grayish. You know, I was, you know, mm-hmm. you know, grayer, but I didn't have, like, you know, I, it just wasn't, like, full of pounds of, you know, dust and shit on me. And whenever I thought I would be able to find, like, a hotel or a gas station and all that kind of shit, the shit was closed. Everything was closed. And nobody wanted nothing to get into it. You, if you, in fact, you even went up to, a, like, a place and said, hey, can I come in? They would be like, why? What are you, tourists? You know, I was like, again, I did it again. Tourist, why? What are you, a terrorist? What are you trying to hide? I'm like, well, no, I gotta pee. So uh, I'm like, forget. It. I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna have to hold it in. And then I eventually get to this train station, you know. And there's mm-hmm. again, and the first time I've ever seen armored police people in my entire life, like full riot gear, semi-automatic weapons, helmets, everything, just getting people, you know. This way, this way, this way. Because apparently all the trains in the other boroughs were working, you know. So that's actually pretty cool. Um, so I just got onto, you know, my train, the one going to my line. And um, and you're still you still know, carrying this laptop, by the way. I'm still carrying the freaking laptop. No charge um, if you got the laptop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, have my notebook, you know, again, have my computer, you know, like, this, again, this is like a te- now, like, this is a packed train, packed commuter train, you know, going to the suburbs. Mm-hmm. And uh, I actually got a seat. And, you know, when we came out of the, tu- like, kind of like the tunnel, you got to see Manhattan again, again, in the background, right. And, mm-hmm. you know, you can see half of it is all, you know, smoky, black, this, that, and the other half, you know. It, the sun, the sun started to kind of break through a lot, you know, a lot of different places. So it almost had like a, a dawnish effect, you know, when you were kind of like, you know, like the first mm-hmm. lights kind of getting through. 
And I looked around the train and there were like a few other great people, like kind of, you know, a lot of just, you know, know, regular people, I guess we want to kind of call it, Um, you know, um, and then I, uh, you know, I kind of noticed that it was also, and I always kind of, and I kind of find it somewhat funny, but, you know, uh, uh, Fashion Week always takes place in New York during 9-11, you know, not on purpose. It was always that week, right? Mm-hmm. So it was just like there was like a kind of a like a contrast to like the advertisements on the train about Fashion Week starting 9-11-01. You know, you started, you know, kind of knew mm-hmm. nothing was the same anymore. You know, it was like, you know, nothing. Mm-hmm. Our political scenarios got we, we're probably at war. If we're not at war, we better be at war by the time I get home. Who the fuck did this? You mm-hmm. know, and all that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You know, so, you know, like. Uh, um And, uh, you know, so and so you did a lot of like. It was a long ride. It was a lot of reflecting, kind of going on, you know. Uh, I, so you know, once you get on the train, how long did it take you to get home from that point? Well, it would. It would. I would say we'd normally be a. Um, you know, it, you know, it was, I, let's just say forty minutes. It, it was mm-hmm. probably like a forty-minute train uh, because there was nothing. You know, uh, there was not, nothing else kind of going on. So they, they were just pushing trains out of the city as fast as they can. So you know. Um, just in that kind of irony of, uh, you know, uh, of the time gap, you know, so, you know, I was home before 12 o'clock, right? Like I got home really early, <laughs> you know, like, um, you know, um, so I actually, you know, uh, there was a couple of things that happened and um, I, I it was, a, you know, there's, a, there's an Italian word for kind of like, you know, crazy, stupid, you know, whatever, stunat. I was a little stunat, you know, so I uh, I I missed my stop. I should have got off, you know. Oh, so wow. uh, um, you know, I got off the next stop, you know, which is just like two towns over or whatever, you know, in Long Island. And I had I called my wife and I was like, "Hey, I missed my stop, you know. Uh, would you mind coming getting me? You know, because I still had to get, you know." Um, and um, so that's kind of when I, you know finally made my contact with my family, you know, for my kind of first time, you know. So now you got that world. deep breath, that, that, that sigh of relief. But did, <laughs> yeah. you get to, did you get a chance to use the bathroom in the train station? I did. I finally got, I used it on the, uh, yeah, I, okay, you know, good. I pushed my way, you know, uh, while I was on the train. I was like, I, I was like, that's it. I got to go. Like, I, this isn't, this isn't normal. Man. Like, this is bad. Yes. And pain, you know, like all the aches are coming in. I'm barely holding on. We got about so, five uh, minutes uh, left, Rich. So, uh, what I want to ask you: How has that experience changed your life? Well, I guess physically there are some flashbacks that I still kind of you know experience. Uh, mm-hmm. it, they're mostly around like the noise, like again, like a rolling thunder. Sometimes it's like when you listen to a train come into a station or. Uh, if you've ever been to Niagara Falls, you know, it has like that kind of like sound to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, if you like, not now, but definitely in the beginning, if you surprised me, I mm-hmm. would have a flashback. Like, you know, there, there were days like I dropped to my knees, you know, like kind of like thinking that the yeah, buildings little, were the PTSD. Coming. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't have that, that other than some of the noise stuff, like kind of right there. The other thing that, you know, kind of, you, know, um, you know, I think we all grew up right that day, you know, like, you kind of thought you were invincible, you know, there were days, you know, like, you know, young Thundercat running around, you know, making businesses Mm -hmm. and doing shit, you know, whatever. And then, you know, you realize that, you know, it it, probably like any near death experience that shit, yeah, shit changed. I no longer drank eight year old scotch. That was the, like, I was at the store, you know, (laughs) a couple of days later, and I was buying like some liquor because everybody was home. Nobody was going, you know, work. Nobody was going to school, isn't that? And uh, I remember at this, when I was about to pay for it, and I'm like, "Yo, man, life's too short to drink bad scotch, man." Like eight year olds. I'm like, "That's it," you know. I'm like, going back and I'm buying the the good stuff. So I always started drinking the good stuff from that point. You know, it was just kind of life's too short, you know, for the for the bad stuff. Um, I also I have uh, you motivated me now to get the good stuff. <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> life's too short. You know. You know, because again, there's there's more. But when I think about like the like the future of work, like in the work attitude, like mm-hmm. could you imagine like something like that happening after COVID? You know, oh like, no, I, it would, it would 
Now, that happened on Wednesday. My company had a, a spot ready for me on Monday in a different building, right? We mm -hmm. all went back to work on Monday. You know, I had a computer and I had a chair. That's all I had. I, and I still so didn't have my power cord. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that power cord. Did you ever get the power cord or did you have to order a new one? I couldn't, I couldn't order a new one because there was nothing being shipped into New York for like weeks. Wow. So how did you like use that. the computer? You had, so you had to wait till that Monday to, to get one at the, uh, at the new office? No, no one knew. There was just chaos, bro. There was nobody looking for a power cord for nobody. They were just trying to get people in and settled and all that kind of stuff, which amazingly they did. Um, but, you know, uh, how I used my computer was like this. Uh, do you know what? Uh, I used the term before when it came to skip breathing, but it's, it's a, it's a uh, term for scuba divers. Right. You're supposed to like take, you know, breaths at a regular base. But if you know mm -hmm. you're running low and stuff, you can kind of hold your breath for, you know, one or two of those cycles to save it. So I would mm -hmm. open up my computer for like five minutes at a time. I would prepare what I needed, like client contact information, you know, this, mm -hmm. that, you know, whatever. And there's still no Internet really back then. So it wasn't like I was able to email myself some stuff or whatever. So I was like, okay, what do I need? Like immediately this second. And I would open up my computer and run it for five minutes and get, and then close it again. And I did that for three months until, wow. until I was able to get my computer cord. You know, I would wow, always ask somebody if they had like an IBM or something, just let me, you know, just let me tutor up a little bit, you know, whatever. Nah, none of that, man. Wow. <laughs> this has been an awesome, impactful story. I thank you for coming on and sharing. I know it's not easy and it probably bring back some emotional trauma that you suffered yeah. from back then. I, I couldn't couldn't imagine what, what what you went through. But I think it's important that you you came on and you told your story and reminded people of just how short life is and just how important yeah. life is and something to think about tomorrow. Well, Please. our time yeah. just about up on this hour liked our content i ask that you like and subscribe you can catch us of course next wednesday here on wdjy 99.1 fm and you can also catch us on youtube lifestyle out the five and you can catch us on spotify also at lifestyle out the five where you can always hit us up at www.aliouttheFive.com where you can see everything about us and you can also can join our discord if you're watching this video from my website or just by clicking on the qr code up in the corner I hope you all have a safe and wonderful night. And Rich, I want to thank you again for coming on and being a guest. It's always, uh, always a pleasure. And for those of you <laughs> that join us, tune in for our weekly series coming with Rich. Please. Also, our Futurism series where Rich drops a lot of his knowledge and everything about Afrofuturism. Until then, y'all stay safe and we'll see y'all next Wednesday. So long, guys. Just keep moving, everyone.